This 180 degree panorama of Cape Town is the setting for this contemporary showpiece by architect Greg Wright. Given a situation like this and a home with such good bones, interior design team Dierwald Prinzlu and Leonard de Villiers from Ebony Curated let their ingredients shine. The guys took this multi-leveled tribute to our natural splendor and transformed it into a showcase of our best homegrown furniture and fabric design. It's a house which fills any visitor with pride at what South Africans are capable of. I must say, walking up this flight of stairs, I already feel like I've had my gym session for the day. Well, well done, you made it. <laughs> Thank you. So what was the brief from the owners? The owner bought this house about a year ago. He lives in Europe. He doesn't spend that much time in Cape Town, but since we've done it, he seems to be here a bit more often. The brief was to refurnish the house and just to soften it a little bit, because as you noticed when you walked in, it's quite a masculine space, lots of very straight lines. So we needed to soften that and bring in some of the best South African local design. And that's where we started and we uh, had lots of fun doing that. Now, Leonard, you are the guy responsible for all the bespoke furniture pieces. Tell us a little bit about the designs. Yeah, and I wish I could take credit for all the pieces, but um, we combined um, some of our wonderful Cape Town designers with our bespoke design. So yes, the dining table, the sofa behind me, the two cassis chairs, and the ottomans were some of our designs. You've definitely managed to create an inviting space. I think it was important picking up on the architecture. The house is very simple. We had to soften it, but still be within that linear sort of feel. So we've concentrated on textures and plush rugs, um, some prints on the sketch cushions, and also brought in um, color. And I think that gives it that wonderful, homely, softened feel. And speaking about the pops of colour, this art is very interesting. Yes, so we also brought in some art. Most of them are by local South African artists. Uh, there's a wonderful piece here which is not South African, it's by Kenyan artists. And I think that's how we like to work. We love to keep the bigger pieces of furniture quite simple and neutral, but then bring in the colour and the interest and the texture with artwork. And we're so fortunate in, in South Africa and in Cape Town in particular that we have such amazing artists that we can work with. And the architecture certainly resonates with the designs. It does, and we were lucky that it's a very simple palette to work with. It's strong, it's clean, and we really tried not to compete with any of that, rather enhance it. What would you say makes this home so unique? I, mean, I think this home really is all about the views. Uh, the architecture is phenomenal, but when you look outside and you can see the view from just about every space in the house, you have the whole of Cape Town in front of you, you have a beautiful view of Table Mountain, you can see the harbour, the city bowl, uh, and it really is the view. With the city being a hub of such diverse influences in food and wine, the owner has put dining at the center of how you experience his home. The dining room area is an entertainer's dream. I have to agree. The fact that it opens up into the living space and kitchen, it connects the whole part of the home. And I think that's what you need when you want to entertain in a, in a space. The kitchen integrates seamlessly. The owner of this home really loves cooking. And the beauty about this design is that you have everything that you would possibly need in a kitchen and it's a great space to be working in, but when you want to hide the mess, there's lots of little corners and uh, cupboards where things are hidden behind. We had such a lovely palette to work with. Again, it was quite strong linear lines, so we just brought in a few bits of wood. We have the beautiful Andrew Dominic chairs. We have some chairs from Woodbender. So we played again with different timbers, different fabrics, just to soften that space slightly. Speaking about hidden spaces, where did you hide the bedrooms? The wonderful thing about this house is that the bedrooms are tucked away on the second level separated from the social spaces, so I think it separates your social space, your resting spaces really nicely. We've used a lot of colour in there, so it's, even though it's a little below us, it's a very happy space and colourful. I think it reflects a little bit of the vibrance of Cape Town. The TV room is a luxuriously textured and quiet hideaway, ideal for winter evenings. In the study, a leather sofa, ceramic sculptures, the centerpiece of a natural wood desk and a bright work of art lend a variety of finishes and interest. In the master suite, there's a lot more going on than first meets the eye. 
it really is beautiful this bedroom has so many unique and special features that makes it truly remarkable this is by far our most favorite space in the entire home firstly because of the wonderful view of table mountain but also this is the room is so generously proportioned and we use the owner's favorite color which is blue in this room and brought in lots of very special pieces because this is the space where he would spend most of his time in. You guys are design gurus, so what tips can you give us if we want to zhuzh up any space in our homes? What I would say or suggest is it doesn't have to be a big change for it to make a huge difference. For instance, in the bathroom here, we removed a very graphic kind of wallpaper and we painted the wall and it just brought a really peaceful, tranquil feel back to the room. Also, I would say, you know, don't be scared of using prints in your interior. It livens up a space with texture and color. It's all good to have a neutral palette, but you have to give it life. Just like you did with the scatter cushions and the rugs. That's correct, Ayanda. Um, again, we used beautiful pattern on the bed. The texture of the headboard, I think, is quite exquisite. It's a cool color, but it has warmth because of the texture. The rugs are plush and it makes you want to spend time here. During the extremes of winter or summer, you can still enjoy the views from the luxurious interiors. But on the good days, this deck takes you right out into the glory of the City Bowl. Then there's this subtle green outdoor retreat off the main living area. Despite the narrow footprint, this house doesn't appear small. No, it doesn't feel small at all, and that's thanks to the wonderful architect who designed it so cleverly. It is a narrow footprint, but it's built on several levels, as we all felt with climbing the stairs many times. But the rooms are very generous, the proportions are beautiful, and it all just works really well, particularly on the site. What were some of the interior design challenges that you faced? We were very lucky. Um, we didn't really have design challenges as much as, as getting furniture into the space. We were lucky that, you know, they, they have a sort of very wide um, walk next to the house. So that made things slightly easier. But getting things up the narrow staircase was, yeah, I think it was our major challenge. But other than that, we had a wonderful canvas to work with. I just love how you incorporated nature into the stand. Yes, I mean, the house is surrounded by beautiful trees, beautiful greenery. And it's really fantastic to be able to see that and access that from all parts of the home. And it's such an integral part of this wonderful site. Dearbalt and Leonard were given just eight weeks to work their magic. And with it, they've created a home where time seems to stand still.